The Better on Draft podcast is recorded live in Royal Oak, Michigan. Now, pop that 40 and kick back with your hosts, Dan, Nick, Ken, Rob, Matt, and Angela. You might be looking at like the chat and stuff. Test. Hey. Make sure it tests uh, lock talk this time. Four, three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Episode 102 of the Better on Draft podcast. My name is Ken. Matt, you all right over there? <laughs> Your name is Ken. <laughs> I am Ken. I'm you not, looked I'm, a little. I'm doing okay. I, I hear us like in five different ways right now. <laughs> Um, I, I wasn't sure if that if if because I didn't hear that I I thought you were just getting confused because you couldn't figure out what you know player you can come up with a jersey that had 102 on it. Uh, I wasn't thinking of that, but we I mean we can go back to college and call it the Sam McGuffey or the Charles Woodson. Oh gosh, Sam wow. McGuffey. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of confused because you're playing music and he's playing music and my headphones are playing music I'm and I'm just music. kind of all well, over I'm the place. I'm not playing music. Uh, well, the the but, music yeah. that you were playing to the get the show on the yeah. road, so. Yeah, we're playing a little bit of music here, but I'm doing well, Ken. How are you this week? I'm good, thank you. We never ask you. Hey, you always go around and introduce us and ask us how we're doing. We never give you the courtesy. So, Ken, why don't you start off the show and tell us how you're doing today? I'm doing well. That's fantastic. I'm doing well. I got uh, you got some balls in your mouth. I got some balls in my mouth. Some uh, <laughs> for the for the people. Some uh, sugar free balls. Balls. And then uh, are they salty? Balls. Uh, they're not. They're very sweaty? sweet. Okay. Very very sweet. Sweaty balls. And then uh, I've also got a, a can of. PBR for right now. Damn, son. I'm, I'm feeling it. I, 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 I'm not cutting it with any uh, diet Verners, but, you know. You know, I've got my PBR. Um, I really think we need to start bringing Bush Light and just leave it there where the 30 of Pabst is. Maybe they'll get the hands. Get, get, get the hands going, yeah. Oh, cheap. Hams is, I mean, even I think hams is cheap. And, oh, I mean, yeah, I'm, the, I'm thir- the king cheap. Hams yeah, Light. $13 for a 30, a 30 pack. 30 pack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean. Just give me some saline solution, put some Everclear in it, and just let's walk around life like that. (laughs) But yeah, my dive runner is per huge. You know, keeps the palate clean. A little bit of ginger, a little bit of... uh, Settle that stomach. Did you know that they have a a ginger balls now? Like a ginger ale balls? (laughs) (laughs) Not a ginger. (laughs) There's no good way to say it, so you just say it. I don't know what's funnier. What's funnier? Are they angry or or are they Scottish? You know, I I really want to find... I, I want to meet the man who pitched calling an energy drink balls and the man who green lit it and said, you know what? That is a great idea. That Let's sounds that. like a great idea. So um, so the guy's name is Hobie Bopart. He lives in Miami. Really nice guy. I'm sure he's rich as shit right now. Uh, he does not own the company anymore. Well, yeah, because he probably got bought out. Uh, he did sell it to a company in Ohio. So the fa- Matt, I I know Matt is like going through instant regret right now. No, I'm just confused. So <laughs> like I, why somebody in Ohio is has even enough money to buy it? Is yeah, that- okay, <laughs> I I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but did he buy like one of those Miami condos with his balls money? No, he they they moved the whole production up to uh, Ohio, but they moved it out of Miami. But he lives in Miami. You said well the the original founder yes. owner pitcher everything like that. <laughs> Pitcher of the balls. Guy pitching balls, yes. Now he's okay. Balls. Uh, he lives in Miami. Yeah, so he's he sold the company. He sold the company to, to a guy in Ohio. Yeah, so I'm and saying they moved I'm everything up to Ohio. Yeah, but the guy who owns it moved it to Ohio, not the guy in Miami. I'm sure he's still fuck in Miami. The guy, the guy who there's no reason to go from Miami to Ohio. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I mean, he like, could have went from Miami to Miami. Right, exactly. True. Miami of Ohio. Actually, you know, Miami is pretty sweet, to be honest. I can't. I can't shit on Oxford, Ohio. Although you do have to have to get to Indi- drive through Indiana basically <coughs> to get there, which is garbage. <laughs> I don't know. I get to go. I get to go south of uh, Gary very, very soon, which means the I'm gonna armpit make of the, America. Yeah, I'm going to make a, a 20 minute detour up to Three Floyds in a week or Hell two. Yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, pick up some whatever. So you guys will obviously see a text message. Uh, yes. Check, check the uh, check, check, check the page to see what's Start saving uh, money now. Check the report. Yeah. I was kind of well, sadly, I can only get two cases when I go, okay. so that's that's the rule, and I'm going to be by myself uh, driving over there, so there's nothing that I can, like... This The place only allows you to buy two cases? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. They, they instituted that rule f- because of people like uh, me. 
<laughs> um, so there Mewling? was a, because oh, yeah. they don't want to sell beer. Oh well, see the thing was is that it wasn't for they they sell out, but the thing is is that people like me would go there and purchase so much that they would sell out so fast. That they would have to. But are they selling something special there? I mean, like on this event, or is this just a Wednesday? It's just like a Wednesday. But the, like, if Zombie Dust comes out, it'll sell out that day. So on a random day, you can't buy more than two cases of whatever, just cause. That is correct. Communists. <laughs> Communists. <laughs> Communists. I mean, it's... so but that's the thing is, is that they do that because people like me, mind you, this would have been. Um, probably seven years ago, uh, went to the Peterson, which is a bowling tournament in Chicago on the way back. So the law in Indiana, I believe is you can't buy more than one kegs volume worth of beer per person per day, unless obviously commercial or something like that. I'm sure bars can buy more than one keg. So you can't buy more. So I bought three people's legal allotment in the state of Indiana and brought it back and like run around hiring up bone bones off the street say hey come here with me for a second I need well there was there was there was four <laughs> of us that bucks? were hey yeah. you have been to get i mean you're not far from gary indiana there, there was four of oh. us who were there so i wound yeah. up and you had to do different credit cards for each one so yeah. like each person walked in bought like when we all bought one brand like one beer one specific beer and that's that's one of the stories where i had uh sold it to a undisclosed person and spotted the money for this person, but uh, yeah, they they paid me that day, which is great, and that that started a great relationship. This but is, yeah, this is exactly what that Chase Pay app is for. It's Venmo, to be able to do things yeah, like that. No. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm well. You're well, Rob. How you doing? Uh, doing okay. Found it uh, uh, interesting to today that uh, I guess maybe we got a little bit of better on draft karma that's going on because. Last week, obviously, we had Harson's Island on. Yes. And apparently, last Friday, somebody from Harson's Island won a million bucks in the lottery. From the oh. like, from the State brewery? Lottery? Not or ne- at the brewery? I don't think necessarily from the brewery, but because basically someone who lives on Harson's Island, uh, he won a million bucks. What? Yeah. <laughs> Send me some of that money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the actual facility. No, 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 no. Or no, the, no. Fa- the facility that's in Marysville, not right. Harsons exactly. Island. Exactly, so they're not even on Harsons Island, but there's just, just simple facts. Talk, I talked about that with my mom about that earlier today. She's like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, my fiance like, has know, been struggling with that for the last seven she? days. Yeah. But, do you tell me it's like it's on it's in Marysville? And it's like yeah. right down the yeah. I said it's an homage to. She's like yeah, but it's not Marysville. Yeah, I mean, my, my but mom's it's nothing having Marys, the same Marysville's problem. nothing like Harson's Island. Yeah, I know. I get that, but it's it's you know an, an homage to Harson's to be like Harson's. Yeah, but the the people the, the place it's <laughs> and love that it, it's literally like. Okay. Trying to wrap your head can, around two plus two equals five. First, first is she question. one of the people that like can't do if you name something like Detroit Coney, but it's at like nine and Woodward or something like that? Like you're, yeah. you're, you're in you know, I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we had we had a conversation. I think it was last night, and she asked me if she's listening. She's gonna kill me. <laughs> I got a couch for you to sleep on tonight. <laughs> I have a spare bedroom. <laughs> she asked me, uh, what's the football team in Montana? I said, what do you mean? She's like, the Uni- NFL team in Montana. University of Montana. <laughs> well, no, she said, what's the NFL, the NFL team in NFL, Montana? And I said, the Vikings. what do you mean the, the NFL Vikings. team in Montana? She's like, well, every state has a team, right? I'm like, in the NFL? Oh, no, no, that, that's not how it works. She's like, so what do people do on Sundays in Montana? I said, they Drink watch beer. football. They just don't have a team. She's like, so that means like places like Alaska don't have football either? Oh, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, no, they, no, they don't. Hockey is there. Yeah, they, they have, they, they have, yeah, high they have a college football. hockey. They have, they yeah. have football. Wait, Alaska? Oh, yeah, they play. They, they play like football. seven on sevens, though. They don't do. Oh, okay, sevens. that's yeah, okay, different. That's different. I mean, they they yeah. play. Oh, I'm football. sure. Well, I, I don't know if they would have enough money to. Uh, and she's not to do like college sports, football or anything yeah. like that. Just because the, the the amount of money to get up and down from Alaska, nobody would really oh, want to go play Alaska and. Probably right. not their major sport anyways. They probably have hockey as their big number one sport. Well, it's probably a lot yeah. like hockey, skiing. Well, it's like Boston University uh, where I went. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. That's you know, shit. hockey became the big sport there, and they, you know. Are they I, a Div 1 team in hockey? Yes. Yeah. 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 They're frozen. Yeah. They got a bunch of teams over there. Yeah. And, and so. Rhode Island Providence is right yeah, there, too. Yeah, it's five you, minutes well, away. Yeah. Well. Close, but not yeah. They're called the Nanooks, the little University of Alaska. Yeah, the, the Nanooks. Yeah, some, some, <laughs> some Alaska's gonna come by and 
<laughs> you picking on the Nanooks? Right. Oh, exactly. Gosh, I, I wouldn't want to fight Nanooks. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do Dude, they got that. a rifle. They got a co ed rifle team. Oh, I mean, well, you live in Alaska. You, I know. Yeah. You're yeah. Boy, I don't know you how to be, shoot. You should be one of the top you ones come out too. Of the, you come and, out of the womb with a rifle. Well, of course, it's gonna be cool, Ed, because they gotta meet somebody. <laughs> you know, the, pairing the, the, up the, there. Uh, You've got to pair up before winter, because from what I've been told, if you don't, you're a cold winter. <laughs> yeah. Dying cold and alone. Nick, what's going on? How's it going, man? <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. Drinking a Uper? Uh, I got a Uper. No, and actually, this is a Upper Peninsula Ale. A Uper? This Still not, Upper Hand. It's Upper Hand, but it's not yeah. the ones that uh, Matt has in front of him that are just sitting there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a, I got a, you know, be you able got to Diet re- Verners and PBR in front a- of him. And, and Uper Ale. I got to, you know, be you know, functioning, so I got to uh, reload. Uh, functioning for what? <laughs> <laughs> You're on better on draft. What's there the function yeah, for? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I just got to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got to do, yeah, do what you yeah, got to do. Yeah, so we do have yeah, a guest guys. in the studio today, uh, all the way from Little Guy Brewing. Yes. Um, there's no city called Little Guy, right? No, it's, it's, it's been Waterford. Waterford. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> uh, Todd, right? Yes, sir. Todd, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing, doing good. good. Are you yeah. drinking something? Oh, yeah. I got some of the uh, Mother Cluster from uh, Falling Down. All right. Yeah. So, right. yeah, they've got that in the, the hallway out here, and so it's it's a nice beer. Good so, drinker. before Little Guy Brewing, what were you doing? Because obviously, I'm pretty sure you were in the industry. Oh, I've been in the industry for about eight, 18 years now. I started out in California at uh, BJ's. I did a short stint at Stone. Did uh, worked at Bayhawk. Then I had a, worked in Koreatown in L.A. Oh, wow. um, then moved to Wisconsin. Worked there oh. for a couple of years. Then moved out here to uh, work at Rochester Mills, Royal Oak, and then Copper Canyon. Um, then I actually went out to Virginia to open up a brewery out there, and then moved back um, to you know open up Little Guy. So so you've been all over the place. Um, explain to us because a lot of people we've we've talked about the the history of that six ninety six um, dead Copper zone Canyon. of Copper Canyon. Oh yeah. So yeah. what what is the story of Copper Canyon? Like, what well, can you tell us? Obviously, I mean, there's I mean, there's a lot of different things. One of the things was that it's easy to see, but it's hard to find until you find that. You know, now yeah. nowadays with the uh, the GPS is on phones and everything, I think people would have an easier time to get there. But the problem is it's closed now. And then, you know, the problem also was there that uh, somebody in Southfield was very good at getting grants written for construction. So one one year it'll be the mixing bowl. One year it'll be telegraph. Mm-hmm. You know, and then five years later, more telegraph and just shutting down. And so the traffic when these shutdowns were happening was just awful. Nobody wanted to drive around there. Nobody would want so, to take the, the the one lane approach coming from the other end. Yeah, and, and so well, you'd have to get off at like Lasser or whatever right. to yeah. get that. And, and so you know, it, it it just became problematic, and you know, the 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 problem the locals just didn't come in that much. They were it was not. So I mean, they've had. I mean, you've had Malty Dog there. You had um, also Etouffee. Oh, Etouffee was over by so, the right, uh, right there on the movie mile. theater. Yeah, in the movie theater. Um, so, which I, theoretically, I think that the brewing system is still in there because it was on the second floor, you know, in there that not easy to pull that thing out. And- so, uh, obviously, I'm trying to figure out exactly who had told me, but somebody had told me about Etouffee and the brewery equipment. It's there and they yeah. can't get it out. Like they, they would have to actually remodel or to remove to, the oh, actual it would, items. It would take some serious work to get it out. Yeah. And, and so... You know, I mean, it, it's sad because that equipment didn't get used very much. It was real. It was new JV Northwest stuff. So you're talking probably a good five hundred thousand dollars system Jeez. or so. That's that's in and there. It hasn't been scrapped for parts yet. Just get well, hacksaw. Well, it just... I mean, you, know, you don't want to take hacksaw to right. stainless, but yeah, it's um, you know, and, and there's that, a recycling center I mean, right down the street on Telegraph. There, there's there's <laughs> got to be an easier way, you know that that. I mean, the, the thing would be also just for them to actually have to shut down for any period of time to do this because you'd have to literally take out the window, get some serious, you know, uh, forklifts and stuff out. But of it's and, for sale by owner right now. There's nothing in there, isn't there? I well, for, at, we're, we're talking at Tufe, not Tufay. Copper Canyon. But Copper Canyon, the Copper Canyon, yeah, there's still. Yeah, that's a whole weird thing too. We can go into that in a sec. So, but. well, Copper Canyon. I recall seeing there was an auction at one point. Yes, and uh. it was it was bought by a gentleman, and it, and he actually had a partner for a little bit, and they were trying to figure out whether they could flip it or whatnot. And then I think the partner bailed on him, and so now he's actually realizing that he has to figure out something. So I was, met with him a couple months ago, and he had some consultants in from Denver. 
uh, to try and figure out what to do. And uh, the, the problem is that the system was already falling apart when I even got there. And there was no problem was that the owner of Copper Canyon just made some bad investment decisions and his kids sort of uh, were living a little too high on the hog too. Um, well, I recall they tried to like even make it a cigar bar at one cigar point. Bar, which was the worst thing they could do because what it ended up happening is they didn't seal it off very well. <laughs> so people would walk in, smell the cigar smoke, and just walk out. Or we would had people that would come in for dinner, a couple beers, and leave. So they would then – those people then became – Two beers, maybe, and a nap, if that, and then leave because they didn't like the smoke. Uh, because there's a lot of people do not like cigar smoke, and then, unfortunately, the landlord also or the owners also had a lot of people to smoke cigarettes, and stuff. And he had hoped that he had attract the Birmingham types there, and he didn't get that. He, you know, he was hoping they would come in buy the high end scotches and everything else, and it was the guys that are coming up, you know, local guys that are bringing their cigarillos. And, uh, you know, buying, getting a water, you know, or. Well, th- that's the thing is it's hard to run a cigar bar. Like I've, oh, yeah. I've been to plenty myself. And if you don't have some type of client, like you, you look at how Genuine started, uh, which Genuine is out in Troy over at 16 in Rochester behind them, the, the Hooters. There are. But that's the thing is, is that back in 2004, they were online only. And they're like, well, we have the stuff. We might as well just open up a, a little storefront and get people in. And that's the thing is, is that they got people in and more people in and more people in. So then they started bringing in, um, you know, Jonathan Drew, Rocky Patel, all these big names in the cigar world to the point where then they're like, well, crap. So they built this giant humidor bar over at uh, Shaner in 59 and started getting more people going there. But that's the thing, though, is, is that because they have their online business, because they have all of these things that they could do, they're not losing their ass yeah. by having a cigar bar. And they didn't go with food. They didn't go with anything like that. It was, they had yeah. a, a VIP area that you could be away from, you know, all the, the ruckus. They have the the standard place. And at that point, they just have a full service bar. Um, I recall going there for a Red Wings game and they were trying to knock out all their Sapporos. So they're like $2 Sapporos. And I'm like, yeah. we are going to get hammered tonight. Oh. <laughs> So, and that's the thing is, is that you need, when you go to a cigar bar and you look there, there's a brand new one on Rochester road between 17 and 16, hmm. excuse me. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Um, but people go there and I think it's, it's becoming a little bit more, more people are going to cigar bars, but you're not going there to get sloshed, get hammered, yeah. uh, to drink a lot, but not many people go to cigar bars weekly. You know, yeah. it's it's a once every other week, once a month. So Printing when you try down, to trying to impress the boss or things like that. Well, that's the thing is, yeah. is that you do have those types of where you're trying to bring in clientele from, you know, out of state that might, you know, be a cigar person. Yeah. But when you don't have that consistent, that person that's coming once a week, twice a week, you're you're not going to get it. And changing it to a cigar bar, you're going to lose that entire you know, two, three time a week crowd. And yeah. when you don't have that, you lose a lot of people. No and you got wasted space. And if you're not turning those tables in a restaurant business, it's not going to do you any favors. And they were full service too, right? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to eat a decent meal with the of cigar smoke. Yeah. And, yeah it kind of yeah, overtakes yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I, I love cigar smoke. I mean, I, I used to smoke myself. But, you know, just sitting in a restaurant atmosphere and just have all of that. just Especially if you have kids. I mean, you don't take kids to breweries, but at the same rate, if you want to go. Who doesn't take kids (laughs) to breweries? Well, and you also have, in (laughs) regards to cigar smoke, like like Genuine. Genuine has really good uh, smoke eating fans. Yeah. To where you walk in and you you, you have that, like, that smell, like, you know, oh, someone's been smoking cigars in here. Yeah, but not stuck a Glade in a a wall or something. Well, no, you don't have that because it's not air freshener. It's just air cleaner, air purifier. Yeah. So it's got, like, the little, the faint smell smell of it. But you smell butt, but it's not straight, you know, it's not the aroma. (laughs) Not like fresh, fully farted butt. No, not butt, like, like, you smell. You smell yeah. like the stomped out cigar butt. Yeah, right. and, and, yeah, well, and then maybe a little woodiness in the air too, uh-huh. just from you know, the, the just cigar. just from being a cigar bar. Yeah, but yeah, right. that's that's one of the the things. I don't know how we got into cigars. It could be uh, uh, a different topic if we had like Ronnie Hay show from uh, Secreto over here, Secreto. Oh, yeah. Or you know who else would be good Z- for Jack, that? Jack Zatuna over at Zatuna <laughs> Liquor, his humidor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the Big Rock Chop House people too, because. <laughs> 
yeah, you know, yeah. they still have a humidor going in there, even though they no longer have their brewery. It's just a couple blocks down. Yeah. But. You know what my favorite cigar is? It's a boy's. It's a boy's. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Hedberg for that one. Yes. Uh, I was gonna say that's that's what what smoking cigars though in beer. Like I've I've smoked plenty of cigars in my life, but it's hard for me. And I know people who like the darker beer with the cigars, but I want a lager, something crisp, <laughs> something flavor, I, like not yeah, as flavorful. I've never done a cigar with a beer. Oh man, no. Yeah. For, for I used me, to smoke a cigar every time I bowled, and so I would have plenty of beers uh, along that, with my for, cigar. For me, it was, it's always if I'm having a cigar, it's it's bourbon, neat. No eyes. Well, I think that's why a lot of people are more drawn towards the darker yeah. beers when they smoke their cigars. Is that that bourbon barrel aged beer that they're going to be sipping on? They're not going to be slamming it like I am. Maybe that's why I'm not a big cigar person. I just want to chug my beers fast. I, as I, I did make a beer when I was after we had opened it in the, the cigar lounge, uh, a cedar bock. So it was a my bock with some cedar wood added to it to give it that sort of woody character and stuff too. And and so it was, it was kind of an interesting thing. It had gotten a little lactic, and and so it was it had a little. Like the character was not overpowering and not, you know, super tart or anything. It just had, you know, this like little twinge there with and the wood and everything else sort of interplayed with that. And you had the the malty characteristics you would in a, in, a, in my box. So let's kind of shift gears and yeah. let's talk a little bit about Little Guy Brewing Company. Yes. How did that, you know, where did the idea come from? Tell well, us about what got, got you I mean, started. I, I, I couldn't use shorts and I couldn't use Parker's. So I, yeah, I had to think of a different name and, you know, some of the other ones. Is shorts taken? Uh, no, you know, okay. some, some guy, you know, I what about like short tails? You can oh, have. short. I was gonna say that too. <laughs> yes, and so you know, but uh, get a C and D on that one. Yeah, right. I'm sure there's they probably. Yeah. I was gonna say if you were a that. short guy brewing, you probably would have gotten a cease and desist from shorts. Yeah. So a little guy was you know an idea that I had a long time ago, and it was like one of these things. And then there was a distributor for a while in the Phoenix area, I think, who had the name, and then they got fused with another distributor, so it was available again. I'm like, I'm gonna take that because. There's not much. There was a few other things that I had ideas for, and I was talking to a lawyer, and they said, "No, don't even bother with this," because there was one that was close enough to an Anheuser Busch name that no way I could have taken that. So, care to care to share? Uh, no, because in case <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I can get to it again, you know. But uh, but you're pretty demonstrative. You're not a little guy at all. No, no. But you know, it's 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 the little guy fighting against the big guys. You know, the the logo is to sort of you know this. Remarkably shorter guy holding up a you know a pint glass and sort of victory salute and stuff. You know you can so sort of see if you if you haven't. Yeah. I mean in the yeah. end you, you yeah. always put that just, put yeah. that up on the camera so that you uh, always root for the little yeah. guy. So, so big machine roots, can look at yeah, it. Yeah, everyone roots for the little guy, and you can pass that to Ken if you want to and get everyone. But yeah, it, it's it's you know that idea of just being that. Little guy and uh, rooting for the, the little guy among things. And yeah, I, I might be six foot four and 200. And so, uh, yeah, we'll leave the weight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that might fluctuate a little, you know. Um, Depending on how many beers you've had that day, yes. it's fine. That's yes. why I don't bring mine up. Yes. And, and so, um, yeah, so it, it just was the idea to, you know, make a brewery, you know, that, and it, it's just a good name. I like it. Well, I mean, it's it, we're running out of good names anyway. So. Now, is there a beer style that you gravitate towards or that you think that Little Guy Brewing Company is going to feature more of? I mean, I like the standard styles, but I also love playing, too, because I don't know if you remember Copper Canyon. I had the the Apple Strudel Triple was one of the standards that everyone loved, um, so I'll definitely be making that. And are you allowed to use those? Those are your recipes? So you- yeah. I mean, they're not going to yeah. come after you at this point, right? They've no, been closed no, for as long yeah, as they have. Yeah, and and so you know, and and I will be brewing them in different quantities anyway. So just it would be an adaptation of that recipe anyway. So you know, um, but you know, and and so uh, you know that, and I did another beer called Summer Sess, which was a uh, modified Belgian wit with orange peel, lemongrass, ginger, and honey, which was a great summer beer. Um, you know, always enjoyed drinking that in the summer and everything and, you know, and doing different things. Uh, you know, like I said, I did the cedar bock and, you know, it's just a matter of playing with ingredients, using the best ingredients you can, um, and going from there. Uh, you know, so you'll have some just standard, you know, because IPAs, you got to have an IPA. I mean, it's, do you? Cause I mean, there's, yeah. It, it, you you have to have an IPA. Yeah, yeah. You, you do. I mean, even, even look at, uh, Vivant has an IPA. You know, a couple. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, even they've had to, you know, bite the bullet somewhat. And, right. You know, and, and you know, yeah, speciation doesn't 
but you know they they've they've played with the idea with a little bit here and there because they've gotten dinged by the fact that they don't have an IPA. But who dings people for not having IPA? Is that just kind of pretentious craft beer lover goes in and says, "Give me your IPA." Wait, you don't have an IPA? Zero stars. Is that well? I mean, probably. I mean, I only yeah. give this a quarter just, star just, because zero stars is unavailable. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's like I've always said is that that you know most people will will judge a Chinese restaurant based on their almond chicken. They'll, well, they'll go to into be a fair, brewery ch- based on their IPA. I think yeah. you can. I think you can judge a taco joint though on their nachos, uh, because I, I I really do because the best nachos I've ever had are with the best tacos I've ever had. So maybe that's just I'm I mean spoiled. that might be just yeah. the fact that it's a good restaurant. Right. Could be. <laughs> Could be. So too many places use yeah. that fake cheese or the, yeah. the or cheese the, cheese whiz. The, the cream cheese. The, the, the cheese, cheese that's not yours. Uh, <laughs> exactly. As not the nacho cheese. Not the nacho cheese. Not the nacho cheese. Yes. So what brought you to Waterford? <laughs> well, Waterford, I mean, for the longest time, I mean I used to live when I moved here originally, I lived in Pontiac anyways. And so I was tired of having to drive everywhere to go drink because <laughs> you, you had, uh, you know, effectively after Bose and King's closed, there was nothing really in the, in the area other mm. than, I mean, you from, you know, for a while there, from Lake Orion down to Birmingham, from Commerce out to Rochester, you had a 20-mile sort of diameter circle of no breweries. Um, since in the past year we've gotten Hilltop, We've gotten uh, fer- experimentation, experimentation and Fillmore 13. Yeah. And then you've got uh, even Rustic Leaf just opened up a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. Um, and you have um, Kickstand now has opened up in commerce. So there's there's a few that have joined the, the, the slew, but it's still, you know, you've got a lot of affluent people. There's 45,000 people drive by, you know, where my location is every day or at least weekdays. I mean, so there's a lot of people that commute from, you know, the – Oakland County somewhere is out to like Howell and stuff. So there's a lot of things. I mean, look, Howell's going to have five, five brewing licenses pretty soon. So if you think about that, it's, you know, there's there's demand for it to some extent. I mean, granted, there, you know, it's the shelf spaces get filling up, but tap room is always open for. I think the know, thing is with that shelf space that is that is filling up is is that, you know, a, a general worry that you know when you're opening up this brewery that. There could be that point where, you know, three, four years down the road that all of a sudden, you know, the, the majority of these breweries start getting, I guess for lack of a better word, obsolete. Well, I think people still go to their locals and you got to make it, you know, you got to be part of the community to some extent, help that out and foster that growth. And, and then also just, you know, you got to use your tap room and that's where you make your gravy anyways, because, you know, if you're if you're trying to make money selling a, a half barrel, you know, for a hundred dollars to a, your distributor versus selling, you know, 120 pints at five bucks a piece, you can do the math that you make a lot more money, you know, in the tap room. So it's two hundred dollars more, people. Yeah, <laughs> and and for so, a math enthusiast, out yeah, there. and so you know, it's 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 definitely a lot better deal uh, to get the get your, you know, people coming into your tap room, and so. For me right now, my goal is, you know, further down the road, yeah, I will try and probably get beer on the shelves. But right now, you're not going to get into a Kroger or a Meyer anyways unless you really got a product and they're going to be coming to you. And if you're at that point, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's a big deal. But, you know, as far as it goes, I'd rather sell the, the you know, even the cans and stuff out of my own tap room, force people to come into the tap room to get beer. You know, and then that that way they come in, they have to come in, they get it, and they get it fresh too. And I'm keeping track of things, and I will have a demonstrable, you know, quality is you know record for a while too that I can say, hey, we haven't had to do any recalls because once you have to do a recall and beers are out on the shelves, Ugh, that just that's... kills you. Um, and and so there's there's a lot of things you got to deal with in that, but it's it's all about managed care, and, you know. And right now. There's so many different new beer bars opening up, and every even regular you know place is looking to have you know maybe a rotational one tap here or there. So you might be doing a lot of sixtals out in the marketplace that might not be regular house beers, but that's how you develop a house following too, you know, and and get people to come in. And, you know, well we see that a lot with yeah. uh, the two Dearborn Bruins, Dearborn yeah. Brewing and Downey. Downey like yeah. they're they're in the Ford uh, 
that Ford, Ford Garage. Bar, yeah, Ford Garage. They're in yeah, Hopcat. Right. They're in all these other places. Places where you expect to see like these little or more more little breweries because yeah. when you've got a twenty four or even a thirty tap house, you're still going to expect to see a lot of the you're same need yeah stuff like that. Just because yeah thirty taps is a lot of taps. Yeah, I mean you know you used to see I, the yard I really house. don't think it's a lot in this day no, and age. No, you'd see the I, yard I th- houses with eighty of nothing good. You know the, the yard house chain. I don't know if we. I don't know if there's any in this thing. No, we got a world yeah. of beer. Yeah. That's probably the closest to yard house. You know, there's a there's a place up in Lake Orion that just opened with a hundred taps. Uh, well, it opened about a year ago, but it's yeah, stupid like big. Hopcat Junior. Oh, is that the it was? Uh, it um, was like called Stockyard, but they changed their name and they rebranded. Oh, yeah, but we do know a place that has sixty five taps. No, it's like sixty nine taps. Sixty nine taps. Ooh. Yeah, 69 taps <laughs> yeah. over at uh, Brown Iron Brew House, yeah. Washington Township. Go there on Mondays. That way, Angelo won't bother you when you eat food. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Uh, that's right. You were up there on Monday. 26, uh, just north of 26 on Van Dyke. Great food. I recommend the grilled chicken wrap. It's amazing. Uh, make sure you tip your wait- wait staff. Thanks, yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Try the veal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, they're doing Octo- their last weekend of Oktoberfest is this weekend. This so weekend. Hurry up. Go see some people, do some German dancing, drink some. They did their st- uh, their Stein hoisting yesterday. Is that is that where you gotta like you, yeah, you, you hoist a Stein, the, correct? Hoist yeah. a Stein. Yes. I, n- no habla Deutsch. Uh, well, <laughs> hoist is English for to hold, and Stein is German for Stein. Stein. So, <laughs> so yeah, I guess the winner was sprecken. just over fifteen minutes on the guy side, and just like the sports, who cares what happened yeah. to the girls? Kidding, kidding, of course. Yeah. I think it was like four and a half with the girls. So do you guys have a, uh, a goal for an open date? No, it keeps getting push, pushed back, of course. Um, right now I've got uh, fun dealings with the Small Business Association wanting an MLCC license, but then the MLCC wants the you know building to be complete before they give you approval. So I'm kind of stuck in a catch-22 and trying to get my lawyer to talk to the SBA people about that, and I think they're figuring that out right now. So it's it's just – one headache after another that's, you know, you deal with. And, you know, it's a fun part about, you know, having a property and things too is, you know, my landlord had, uh, well, I guess the previous landlord had allowed a guy to store boats in the fire lane at the building. But because yep. I've been dealing with, you know, the, the building people that uh, all of a sudden the fire department's saying, hey, this has got to go. You know, this is in the fire lane. Um you know, right. <laughs> so, so we had to go meet with the city the other day, even though it was not really anything that impacted me exactly. But there's no way I could have ever opened if that was still in, in effect. So we, you know, landlord terminated that guy's lease and stuff. And wow. But yeah. so, so how big is this? Is the space? The space is seventeen thousand square feet. Holy shit! Damn. So it's, it's okay. It's, that's that's not small. That's no, what this, I just thought because there was there was a little video that I that I saw on YouTube and it looked like it used to be maybe like a, a grocery store. It was or a grocery store. store. It was actually a hardware store originally, um, and uh, <clears throat> Church's Lumber and 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 it since has actually become you know it was a Kroger for a little while, and then it was a uh, Save a Lot. And then after that, it's had some incarnations as uh, so Halloween stores and stuff. Failed grocery brewing company didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, churches. Farmer mean, Jack Brewing Company. Yes. I mean, we, we hear a lot about you know these breweries that have been opening. You know, we, we yeah. had the likes of you know Baffin and Jamex, and and you know they're they're starting off with these spaces that. Probably aren't what four thousand square feet. Yeah. We, uh, if that. Yeah, I drove by Jamex today for the first time. Oh my God, that place is small. Yeah. Is it it's really? Really small. I mean, like fifty people. And, and, and that's coming from there. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, damn. Thirty-three minutes market. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, Bingo. Seven thirty-three. <laughs> yeah, first joke. Yes. So, so I guess what is the plan for for? Well, that's spaces? the thing that's is huge. you know it, it's it's. I wasn't originally looking for that large of a space, but the problem is trying to find a place with 20-foot ceilings because you need a lot of space for tanks height um, that can handle some weight that um, also have a loading dock and I could get a 10-year lease with. And so I was, you know, it was crazy. I was trying to call people and some places wouldn't even answer, you know, Call me back to say, you know, show me. Yeah, their... realtors are assholes. I, I've yeah. learned this. Yeah, we're, oh, yeah, I'm sitting next to one right now. There you go. Yeah, Wait, you realtor or asshole. <laughs> yeah, and so it was. It was just. It was the worst. And so finally, we found a place we liked, and then realized that the subflooring became an issue because just to support things is going to cost me a lot of money. 
Um, Those tanks aren't going to be light, are they? No, no, no. It's it's. There's a lot of uh, stainless going in. Um, are you purchasing it from another brewery or? No, I've had the, the equipment's uh, from Craftwork up in Lake Orion. And actually, I'm getting a pilot system from uh, uh, some guys out in Portland, um, stout manufacturing. But so I have a 20 barrel system coming. Um, and the tap room's got to be about 5,000 square feet or so. So it's going to be a large enough tap room because that's, like I said, I'd rather have more, you know more people coming in and, right. you know, and having a little gaming area too, where, you know, like cornhole. arcade games, no or? cornhole. Okay. And actually I'm going to try and set up to do a, uh, you know, soccer pool. So I don't know if you've seen that where you've got you, effectively a ground level pool table. It's about 20 feet by 10 feet where you oh, kick okay. soccer yeah. balls. Yeah. As, yeah. Yeah. You know. Can so. I recommend Kube? Kube. So Kube. we actually played this when we were up at the UP beer festival. Yep. It's literally you throw batons at it's almost yeah it's it's a great game yeah you play it it's about twenty by thirty you yeah. throw cute, like uh, batons at little wood pieces and yeah it's it yeah. gets people play it takes about thirty to forty minutes to play yeah so I mean if as I'm well sure the guy said that we we were really bad like, no he said we were good. Oh. <laughs> like that's why the game lasted so long. Like when, oh, yeah. when there's multiple people who are really you good at the been game. Drinking enough is really the case. Well, no, we were shit can. But <laughs> yeah, um, we yeah. we were, we were in the tank for sure. Um, yeah. But my thought is, I mean, as you build a staff, you have people playing this game. It's going to yeah. take them an hour to play it. So you could even you play can, it on that yeah. the soccer pool yeah. field too, because yeah. it'll be big enough to where you can. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely things we can sort of adapt with too. Yeah, and there's sure. the space will you know have a cornhole area, have some dart area too. Well, maybe so. like '90s arcade games. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I you got to do the table like the bar tabletop games though, like yeah. the no. Galaga pad. No, where you set your bar on no. that. Yeah. I want I want yes. I want Tekken. I want uh, <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Tetris. Turtles the four player. Oh. I want, Turtles in time. I want NBA Jam. <laughs> I want NFL Blitz. He's on okay. fire. I want right. I want old school Tiger Woods. Yeah. Golden tea. You you want a straight bar? Oh, okay. Come on, centipede yeah, with which, the rollerball and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have, yeah. Well, no Pac Man. There's there's a bar no that alleyway. opened up right above Checkers downtown. Yep. Yeah. Um, there, there's there's Ready one, Player One Ready in Green Town one. that's trying to get open. Yeah. Which and there's a I, third one. Well, there's that, like a, vit, a pinball sort of place over there in uh, Ann Arbor area that has. A whole well, you got Pinball Pete's. Yeah. Pinball, yeah pinball I don't Pete's. know if they serve alcohol there though. No. Didn't that play? Yeah. Didn't that place go through like a crazy flood a couple years ago? Possibly. I wouldn't know for sure. Obviously, the the main arcades in the basement, so that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. Okay. That would um, suck. But yeah, yeah that's because I, I remember the place did. Go, I remember because it was like one of the last few places to actually have a working DDR machine. I was gonna say yeah, they had a lot of Japanese like yeah. Konami. Like yeah. there, yeah. Marvelous Marvin's has one there over in Farmington Hills. Let's say where well, what was that ddrfreak.com or whatever yeah yeah old. yeah 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 ddrfreak.com Speaking of, does anybody remember the game road rash yes yes they're coming they're relaunching it oh geez. they got a kickstarter <laughs> it's road redemption <laughs> but it's only going to be available on the computer but, but oh i know what choice. you're talking about yeah it's on steam right now uh yeah but it's i still play windows linux on Sega, right? No, I'm not computer. PlayStation. I got, a, I got an emulator. I, I don't on. need a PlayStation. Yeah. So yeah, they're it's called Road Redemption now. Road Redemption. Yeah, I, I had saw that. Um, it's on my Steam list, but I've seen really bad reviews for it, so I haven't pulled the trigger yet for it. I may have to watch a YouTube video on that one. I don't think. It, yeah, I, I just saw it said, "Did you love Road Rash?" I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. Who and then didn't? I watched it, and then instead of like. Like punching and kicking, this dude's like taking full on shovels and pipes <laughs> and knocking people over. Um, it's uh, quite. I, I, I hated Gunther. So, what's going to be your very first uh, beer that you're going to be brewing for a uh, little guy? Like, what's going to be your flagship well, to get out there? Right now, the first, yeah, you know, uh, four regular flagships. I'll have a honey Kolsch, where uh, standard your standard Kolsch with just a kiss of orange blossom honey, just to sort of sweeten it up a little bit, make it very easy accessible. Sort of as as they say, sort of that uh, that that the beer that sort of gets the the Bud Light guys the, the gateway beer the gateway beer and uh, so something easy drinking though very light and that's not going to sit in the tank a long time too because yeah. you know it's real estate and then um, I will have a Belgian pale ale I will do a an IPA and then I'll have a red. How many taps are you guys planning on? Uh, at least sixteen. Okay. Well, what are you going to do with the other twelve? Well, I mean, they're going to have rotational Probably stuff. Beer. Well, you see, that, like, like, yeah. like I uh, explained earlier, we'll have a, a pilot system, too. So we'll be able to do three-barrel patches 
of smaller stuff so that we can have some experimental stuff, get, you know, fresh hops in, do some uh, smash batches and things like that where you get a chance to try, oh, this is Kahatu hops. And, you know, and we'll do things like, um, you know, because we've got a gym next door, I'm going to try and do a grisette, which would be a, a effectively a, you know, for those who don't Protein know. Protein beer? A, no, 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 no. A grisette's a uh, sort of a, a, a sessionable saison. Um, so it's it's a lower alcohol, it's about 3.5% or so, and it also is a little, you know, being a saison-ish, you have very little residual sugars and stuff too, so it's going to be a lower calorie beer too. I think I calculated it at about 130. Yeah. So uh, calories. So it's it's still something easy drinking because and you know things like that. You know you you can't have, you know they got to be fresh. Um, you can't have sitting right. around session beers that sit around are just useless. Right. Um, that and that's the problem. You never want to put. Right now, there's all day has the marketplace. You can't put something like that on the shelves. Because uh, you're not going to make money. It's just going to sit there and die. Because, you know, and, and so things like that, we'll have some different saisons, do some different big beers, do some, you know, uh, you know, and just have fun. Um, you know, make some different things that, you know, people, you got, always got to have a stout or a porter because people will go crazy if they don't have a stout or a porter. Right. If you don't have both, even, you know, but, you know, is there, so uh, is, we're, we're going to take a quick break though. I know. We'll be right back. He's gonna. He's not going anywhere. I've got yes. questions. I know. But we've got answers. We've, we've got a break. We'll Let's be right back show. with the Better Out Draft podcast. I over here, but not. <laughs> We're uh, back in the gutter of uh, episode 100 for sure. Yeah. Hey, somebody serves it up. You, you got to. You got to swim. So you got to chef delicious too. <laughs> <laughs> so so really quickly before we get to the news, we had some football stuff over the weekend, didn't we? Uh, yeah, it crushed yeah. everyone yeah. in fantasy. <laughs> so week three of the Better on Draft uh, Murder. FanDuel Challenge. Murder. Still to turn out a little light. I don't understand why people don't want free beer, especially good beer. I was going to say, this week we're going to be giving away a bottle of 2015 Backwoods Bastard, uh, Barrel Aged Scotty Karate. And 2016 and Backwoods Bastard. No, not 2016. I did not have that bottle, so I had to change oh, that up a little I bit. I actually do. I think I do have a 16. So, so But no, we are going to be giving away um, the Scotty Karate Barrel okay. Aged, uh, the Rum Barrel Aged 4 Elf, uh-huh. and uh, Backwoods Bastard 2015. This past week, our own Rob was the big winner with 131. Oh, wait, no. No. Excuse me, I had like 144 back. points. No, you're no, you're well. You actually did win. Sorry, yeah. Rob. No, 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 it's okay. I, yeah. I was pretty uh, sure yeah. I did. No, no, no. no. Matt like, won right. with 131 points, and then it was Rob that came in second. I think I was close. in last again. You didn't even break 76. Yeah, I, I, I ain't I too didn't good break at these, so. these daily. Yeah. How did Ke- how did Rob get second when his Steelers didn't even play? Because uh, I don't even know if he even picked the Steelers. That's so damn true. They didn't show up for the anthem or the rest of the game. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. Well, ouch. So yeah. he, he had Kirk Cousins. He had uh, Delvin Cook. He had Jordy Nelson. You talking about me or him? N- no. Uh, actually, no, you. Yeah, I had I have those players right, so as well. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Man, I'm screwing up today. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, Jordy so Nelson, wait. he did well last night. So oh. go yeah, you didn't have any Steelers people, man. What's what's going on? Because I go off the statistical analysis. They're playing. The, they played the Bears. Just, just because <laughs> the, the Vikings. Just because yeah. I have undying love for the Steelers does not mean I'm going to pick Steelers players. I mean, were you not there at our fantasy draft? Oh, I know. Did Did you hear me draft a Steelers player? No. A- exactly. The The <laughs> fact that I even have Steelers defense, I don't even. That wasn't even supposed to happen. Do they uh. have a defense? So apparently not because they can't stop the run. I, but, can't, you know, stop I can't name a single Steeler defender. You may, you may continue. Oh, Ryan, she's here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Anyways, yeah. uh, we're gonna be posting that up on our page. Yep, shortly. probably tonight. Tonight, tonight or tomorrow morning, we'll be posting the link. It's free to join. Yeah. Uh, the winner. Uh, we're only one winner, so obviously have multiple people. But you have to beat the staff. That's the only rule. So if you beat the staff in uh, this FanDuel league. <laughs> Uh, and you are the first place. We obviously. send you beer. We give you beer. I think it's all three bottles too. Yeah, Win- it's, it's going to keep. All. It's going to keep yeah. going. So if somebody wins this week, next week it's four bottles. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to find something to throw and, into the and bottle. And if and if this, it's if, was, if we get, if we go undefeated till episode 15 or episode like 117, I think we send them a 15 pack of Miller Lite. <laughs> Just change it. Do, it, it, do it, like it, a a, 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 a coin flip. Good people, yeah. A coin yeah. flip at the end. You either get this giant stack of barrel door number aged, one or door number two. Old, you know, yeah. good beers, or 
you get a 15 pack of you, Miller Lite. You can Lite have cans. what's under, behind curtain number two. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. We could we could tease and be like, you could have what's behind get, curtain give number what's two. What's under the box? Start what's start taking box? what's in the box. Yes. Start taking <laughs> photos of like big beers that we or, don't own. Like here's yeah, a barrel it, of Rare and it, Utopia if, and if it gets yeah. if it gets that far, we get like in a week 15. You know, I I got an extra bottle of chocolate rain. I'll throw that sucker. in. Chocolate rain. If it gets that far. Yes. So, Matt, you had other questions for our guest. I, I totally <laughs> lost my train of thought because you guys hijacked <laughs> us. Well, I mean, it was 740, and we've, for, you know, two years now, taken our break at 740. Yeah, yeah. you guys are just so inconsiderate. But yeah. um, <laughs> Probably something on the size of the building. or Actually, or no. It was. Yeah. I was going to ask you, uh, we talked about your apple strudel triple. Yep. Are there any, you know, recipes that you've just been jotting down that you're kind of excited to put on the pilot system just to see? If oh, yeah. They... I've, been, I've been doing a little playing on my home system, just, you know, having some D- fun. That's the dirt that I want to know. Like, yes. what's the special weird stuff that you're going to really get funky? You know, that just even with the Belden Pale, um, doing some stuff with different flowers, uh, having some different flowers in there. Uh, I think some lavender and some uh, uh, violet. Uh, just for different flavors, um, you know. Like I said, the grisette is another thing, and and just playing with some of the different local hops. Even nowadays, you know, where the the some of the Michigan varieties are wildly different than the Pacific Northwest varieties. Chinook is a wonderful hop in Michigan, whereas in you know Pacific Northwest, it's really a very piney hop. Um, so it's it's you, you've got a lot of difference. So I'm just trying to play with some of that, and you got all these new hop varieties too that are coming out that are just, you know, Idaho Seven and some of these just experimental hops that, you know, some might be good and some might be well, need to be forgotten about. Sounds yeah. like the name of a really terrible gang. Idaho Seven. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Don't go down uh, a yeah, white supremacist that, gang. And don't go down, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Don't go down that road. It's the yeah. Idaho Sevens territory. Yes. The Rolling Sevens, baby. Yeah. So, but you know, it, and, and there's just different things with even Belgians, and I was, you know, thinking of even, uh, you know, a a, a French fry at Belgian. Uh, Frit. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, just doing. A Rob, something. that raised your eyebrow. Would you drink French fry beer? I mean, if it's good. Well, I think French fries, good beer, good French fry beer. Mm. Logically. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, I mean, there was just something I even thought of today where a friend of mine was mentioning that she was sick and. And I was like, wow, for wintertime, it'd be good to make a, you know, a probably a Belgian strong with uh, some ginger and some some, and some lemon, tussin. some lemon peel and maybe some um, uh, uh, like a nice. And, and, and no, no, no. I, I did a Belgian double once with some star anise and some cinnamon, which was really good. But the problem is there are two types of people in this world, those that hate black licorice. And, and those communists, that color, yeah, and, 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 and so, communists. well, yeah, they go hand in hand, right? But, uh, and wow. so it it just you know something that did not move very fast because you know if you got that black licorice flavor, people don't want to touch it. So, I mean, I'd, I'll I'll play with it small amounts, but not you know. Huge Can things, we make a Jägermeister beer? Oh, uh, actually, to be fair, Jägermeister is delicious. Black licorice is terrible. Yeah. I know that I walked a very fine line of people who like one and not the other. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's the German in me. Yes. No. I, I, I've drank plenty of Jaeger, and I'll just leave that to Vic's Formula 44D if you need to drink some exactly. of that. Exactly. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's some things you just don't need to do. Um, or you got to ask yourself, will this actually sell? And then go, oh, no, it won't, you know. So I know you guys you talked a little bit earlier about being pushed back. Do you have a thought of like is this going to be a Christmas open? Are you probably even more spring? January-ish? Yeah, I'm hoping January right now. So. so how do you how do you perceive Waterford? I know you said there's a lot of people go back and forth. Like, are you trying to tailor beers to the working class Waterford crowd? Are you trying to just brew beers that you like and hopefully they catch on? What's the strategy going into? Uh, you know, opening up this bad boy. Well, I mean, there's you, you, you want to keep the locals happy, of course, but uh, I think I'm going to make beers that I like, um, I like to drink, and... Because worst case, you just drink the beer and... Well, yeah, and, and yeah. so, you know, and I think I've got a good enough uh, footprint or finger, you know, on, on what people like uh, to some extent, even though sometimes they might not know whether they'd like them, Um and so you do it, you never know with some of these things, like a saison with different flowers or whatever. You know, it's just a matter of uh, experimenting some. But 
you know, I, you can't try and chase one group or another. You have to try and make things for at least have your niches covered. So that, like I said, you know, with the, the Col- honey Kolsch, you got that gateway beer. Somebody wants that light lager. Um, and there's 99 off-premise licenses in Waterford right now. So there's three per every square mile. So that you're talking about a town where there's a lot of people that drink. And so definitely we're going to have a crowler get mobile canning coming in until we get a real canner uh, because people will take the stuff out on their boats all the time. So we've got to cater to the boat keep people um, because it's... Uh, what yeah. about beer in a bag? Like, uh, you know, they put wine in a bag. I mean, wouldn't that be smarter than either a mobile canner how, or well, a glass growler? The, 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 the problem is that those are... Wine is not carbonated, really. So you... you the holding of the carbonation is the big problem. And so there's been some people who have tried to use these foil seal packs sort of things that are like for camping and stuff that you can use, but they just don't hold pressure very well. And so as it, and, and you know, as you expand, it's going to tear up the seams. Um, I used to use uh, something just to take home. You would get yeast in these, effectively these gallon jugs, I would call them juggies, um, that, I would use them as growlers because I could collapse them, take the air out as I drank out of them. They wouldn't break. And, but the problem would be every so after, you know, they held pressure to some extent, but they did stretch out a little bit. So, you, you, you know, and it was a gallon, so it was like double growler size. So you had to drink it, you know. Oh, damn. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, nope. they, they was, I, I'd call them juggies and uh, <laughs> carry them around, uh, you know, go golf or something. And, and Must have really hurt your back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was it was something I would take. So I wouldn't break, you know, uh, you know, I would I wouldn't take the glass from the brewery, you know, because I, everyone's got like 10,000 growlers. I mean, I've got so many lying around. The house. I've got about 40 to 50 in my apartment right now. Yeah. So many in the basement. You know, it's it's it, they just accumulate. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's why I love this. Now, the, the crowler thing, it's like you walk out, with you know, crowler or two and, you know, you're good. And, just recycle it and you're fine, yeah. Uh, and so that yes, I mean, and and so I think, you know, the the amount of people. I mean, there's so many different even liquor stores around me yeah, there that, that that do have quality beer, that I don't think I need to make something dumbed down for anyone there. Um, you know, and there's always going to be the type that doesn't want to drink anything stronger than a Bud Light. You know, so it's. Uh, it's it's just a matter of um, uh, you know why try and chase that market. I mean, if they, I've got the, I'll make a, you know pilsners here and there. I'll make you know they'll have that honey colch if they want it, but I won't have anything like a light log or like that because it's just why bother? Yeah. You know. Well, with segment two. Well, we we do have segment two, and uh, obviously, as always, with segment two. Here is Robert with the beer news. <laughs> Don't interrupt my intro. You just interrupted your own intro. Damn right, because <laughs> my intro. My, my intro, damn it. That that front part, that, wow. that's, all, that's pretty much all I needed. That, that's all I needed. With Robert. That's right. Oh, gosh. All, all five bucks that cost to do that, that is awesome. Fiverr is yeah. such an awesome thing. Yeah, it's the well, same guy who does our regular intro. All right, so I've paid him so many times just for our first intro because we've had me, Dan, Nick, me, Dan, Nick, Rob, me, Dan, Nick, Rob, Matt, me, Dan, Nick, Rob, Matt, Angela. <laughs> Five dollars for each one. All right, so the news being brought to you by North Center Brewing, Northville, Michigan, Northville, Michigan. Check them out on, uh, dang it, North Center Road, Drive. North Center Road, <laughs> North Center Road, South Baseline, South, South Baseline slash Eight Mile for for uh, you, you know M M&M and M fans. You know, check them out on Wednesdays. Ooh. For some trivia with Antonio. And with their new full kitchen. They and their new, new full, full kitchen. kitchen. Yep. Get some coconut brown if it's on. It is. Oh. At least wow. it was a couple days ago when Actually, I Actually uh, I had a chestnut yeah. brown yesterday at Baffin, not Boffin. <laughs> Buff, I don't know. <laughs> what's what's Baffin? Yeah, it's this brewery. <laughs> yeah. Uh but I'm pretty sure you would have wet yourself if you yeah. had it. I might have to Goodness. uh swing by there. Goodness. It was redonks. What's in the news? All right. Uh just covering a couple events. Obviously we've got the uh the Michigan Brewer, Brewers Guild Fall Beer Fest is coming up Friday and Saturday, oh, October yeah. 27th and 28th. Um, obviously, we are 
hopefully doing our scavenger hunt again. We will be. And hopefully having more than one person do it because... Don't you know, matter to me. We're still giving away beer, whether it's one or a hundred. That one person got a oh. lot. Mrs. Jen King, she got quite a bit. She got a nice haul. Are we, are we planning on being there? Uh, we plan on being in there on Friday, aren't we? Yes, you guys are going to be there Friday. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Oh, wait, where are you going to be? I will not be in town. You got a better offer. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, all right. I will be in the armpit of America, Indiana. Ah, oh, no. Right. Decline. Yeah, there, well, there he'll, he'll be Indiana a... fans. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so. all three of them, maybe. Okay, yeah. So right. you're going to go to Three Floyds then? I will not. I'll be in Fort Wayne, actually. Oh God! Right. So I won't even be at Three Floyds. But yeah, the one the one beer festival that's literally a three minute walk from my apartment <laughs> complex. I will not be there. You may have to leave yeah. us the keys just in case. Um, yeah, we're gonna use that as a crash pad. None, none of us are DDs yeah. at that. That's point. That's fine. Just feed my cat. Right. That's fine. We, we, we <laughs> yeah. should do a live broadcast from your apartment. Yes. And then go stumble, yeah. stumble to the fest, come back and do another hour right. and Lock, just record lock in my side computer. Side. I know those guy that runs the security desk. We're, 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 I don't okay. know about that. <laughs> um, obviously, there was uh, some that that hit today, which uh, Matt brought to my attention. Oh there was yeah. October fest event that was going on with uh, Dragon Mead, Coonan, and Falling Down, which has yeah. now been canceled because apparently the Liquor Com- Control Commission denied the license reportedly because they could not find the payment, according to one article. So which, uh, I saw yeah. this actually, I think this came in late last night yeah, when that was the first time, it was I late saw, last night. Yeah. Some of the earlier comments I seen on the social media, I said, yes, the social media. The, the, social, social, the media. social media. The, the, the Facebook uh, and the Twitter yeah, machine. Right. Like, so, some of the initial things that were said was direct all questions to the city of Warren, yeah, which, like like up front, go to the city of Warren, not as, through the through the LCC. As if that mayor hasn't said enough things. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Fouts, we're talking to you. That's but, right. Yeah, that's Fouts. Yeah. That's right. But uh, well, we're not playing on a, on a phonograph, so he wouldn't yeah. hear us. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a record player for those of you who don't know the phonograph. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so some of the earlier things phonograph? were directing towards the actual city as opposed to the LCC, which yeah. is interesting. They are some of the more incompetent fucks in the world. Yes. I Government employees is in a whole. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. All right. So this this one kind this one kind of hit a lot of people and it kind of upset a lot of people too. I like, would imagine so. Yeah. I mean, something that I mean, you're talking. They've been in advertising it. And yeah. Everything else, they've been building yeah. it up. So yeah, I was gonna yep. say all the money spent in advertising and all the money probably spent making beer just for the festival. Yeah. yeah. And just well, I know Kuna's still gonna have theirs. They said they're they're still yeah. gonna do theirs. I'm sure mm-hmm. Dragon Meat's still gonna do something. Probably on 696 now. Yeah. Um, but you know, I went to the. The fall or the big beer fest in March at Hallmitch, mm-hmm. and it was really small. So I don't know if you know. I mean, and all the same people were advertising about having beer there. Um, I think there were probably like twice as many breweries at the the big beer fest, and it seemed underwhelming. So I mean, it's it's still one of those things you got to build up by having it and keep even. Well, first my thought years. is I don't know if Hallmitch Park is. Is the place to have a beer fest? Not that it's a yeah. bad place. It's, you know, I remember as a kid, that's where we had our little YMCA field days with all the good tennis courts. Yeah, I mean, got great softball fields as well. But it seems like that's just not the place. But I mean, Warren, it's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, it, Warren should. It's the third biggest city in the state, and it's the largest growing city in the state as well. So yeah. um, there needs to be some sort of place to go in Warren. For yeah, there. right. Now they got to figure that out. Uh, so today apparently is National Coffee Day. I don't keep up with these national. It's funny days the day after shit. the National Beer Drinking right, Day. Right, exactly. You need the na- you National gotta, Coffee Day to wake <laughs> yourself up. All the beer up. you drink. Guess what? I did both on both days. Right. So <laughs> I've got my bases yeah, covered. Yeah, yeah. But uh, obviously, with it being National Coffee Day, I'm sure people were able to find coffee relatively cheap, uh, unless your ass was going to Starbucks. Um, of course, Dunkin' Donuts put out their their little presser that it was a buy one get one free. Uh, but they also did another release with the collaboration with North Carolina's uh, Catawba uh, Brewing Company uh, out in North Carolina that uh, Dunkin' Donuts did a collaboration and made a beer. Uh, it is called, and this is, oh, this is so weird. It's Dunkin' Pumpkin Brown Ale. It so is, it's, you it's, say it's, that. It's, it's, like I said, I kind of feel like it's it's everything Ken loves and everything Dan hates at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> so you, you said uh, pumpkin brown. So Dog Vichette came out with a pumpkin brown too. And I had it two nights ago, three nights ago when yeah. I was at Zatuna Liquor. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Jack, uh, um, well, I bought a bottle off of Jack, and uh, I had it later that night. And, yeah, it was um, quite an interesting taste because a lot of those flavors go into the brown ales, like your cinnamon, uh-huh. your spices, those yeah, kinds of things. They make usually a good winter beer and stuff, too. But... So, so pumpkin added to the brown malt bomb was just really weird. Yeah. You are not good with the malt I don't know. <laughs> no. my, kine- my kinetic sense right now is just way off. <laughs> Hand-eye coordination. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm. I'll definitely. I mean, well, obviously, it won't get up here. But. Oh yeah, no, no. Is, is it, new Dr. Shed one. Is it a big one? Is it? A, I've not. I, I mean, mean, it's in six packs. Pumpkin. Well, no, I mean, as big as in uh, ABV. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Not, is not a big good. Pump, pump, I liked it. Is, you know, they're they're standard, which is you know they're regular, you know, and they sell. Well, probably nowadays they're having to probably rebrand things, and because everyone just. Died on the that pumpkin. that pumpkin yeah. ale got big one year and then just shit the bed the next because everyone yeah. like everyone geared up for a big pumpkin ale year and then like nobody cared yeah mm-hmm. yeah it it, it kind of you could probably out. find some 2016 like pumpkin just chilling out oh, on yeah, shelves yeah, right now right yeah. yeah pretty much you're you're um, unless you're you're out there at uh, Catawba's uh, tasting rooms it, the chance of getting of this is is pretty remote. Um, it looks like it's only going to be a one-time offering. They only made about sixty kegs, and uh, yeah, if you're if you're not out there, it's, it's probably not a good chance you're going to get it. So it's kind of funny that you brought up the whole thing about a French fry beer, uh, donut beer. Yeah, hot any, dog beer. Any, yeah, yeah any. Well, I mean, Petoskey like, had that donut beer. Let's just say just national chains. Anything from a national chain that you would like <sighs> to have the taste of in a beer. Yes. <laughs> I would love to have a Qdoba burrito beer. <laughs> Chili's queso beer? Nah, no, no oh. queso beer. Just don't don't look at me with that tone of voice. You wanted a burrito queso. beer. I, I want pulled pork, cilantro, onions, and jalapenos in my beer. Wow. What? Uh, you you said I, it. I know, but. I could literally live off burritos. A I mean, I'm a huge burrito fan, but a in a beer. But no. ale? Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about the Q line. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, real quick side note: Dunkin' Donuts is banding about, or is thinking changing their name to just Dunkin'. All right, no Hammer. Way. No, <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. That no, ain't no, true. No. Are you serious? Out of all the things to get no. Nick angry, no. No. no, no, changing the name of Dunkin' Donuts. They're all about branding, you know. It's yeah. like, you know, <laughs> oh, who is it that was advertising the day? I was saying, it's like, oh yeah, we're not just that. We're. You know, <laughs> furniture too, or something. Burlington Coat Factory do oh, more yeah, than Burling, just coats. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was it. I knew it was something. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, where who like are they, are they still gonna have like cuppy coffee racing? And ba- well, I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, some some sections dashing I mean, donut and sections gotta and win. bagel. That that's gotta happen. And what you call it at the uh, Jimmy John's Field? They don't do the the donut, the bagel, and uh and all that. They do uh the iced coffee, the regular coffee, and then uh, the mocha or something. The nitro coffee. The nitro coffee. The but nitro. didn't Ford or didn't Ford didn't Comerica Park go to the Chevy races? They do the Chevy mm-hmm. races, and I think they still do they, the they Dunkin' still Donuts do. race too. They need more. They need more of an actual people running around the field there, though. They, oh, like Atlanta? Well, not or or the the presidents in in Washington. Yeah, or yeah. the sausage race. The sausage Milwaukee. race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actual people. Yeah, instead of a board. True. Uh, so I saw this post pop up on one of the boards today. I, I was kind of curious what your your uh, your opinion on this. Uh, so somebody was selling some mead on the board. Hashtag mead is not beer. Uh, <laughs> Um, no one's really, as far as what I saw, no one has really taken a, a flamethrower to this post. But it, it's it's something I was kind of curious about. So this guy was selling bottles of it's it's called peanut butter jelly crime. From Moonlight, it's very very <laughs> interesting bottle because it is a picture of a peanut butter jelly sandwich with X's over the eyes to indicate it's dead, and it's got a knife stuck in the middle of it with jelly coming out. It's pretty interesting. Obviously, TTB never approved that. Right. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's made from. Oh, this, I see right now. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, made from Superstition Meadery. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dan, if you're listening, this place is out in Prescott. It's about an hour north. If you decide to head up there um, next time you're out here, go, go ahead and grab a couple bottles. Uh, but, check it. You can't carry that one on because it's more than three ounces. Oh, shit. Well, put it in the check bag. Doesn't matter. Um, but obviously, it's not distributed here. But this guy was selling it up there on the board, and it's just kind of in search of Monopoly money. And thank you beers. 
Is which, Monopoly money code for just pay me retail? Yes, it, it is code yeah. because obviously you can't really just say it. But asking for thank you beers to sell a beer. I mean, even it, to trade a beer. I mean, it's it's kind of like you know. It's going to happen anyway because it's something that's not distributed here. If somebody's really w- wanting to get it, sure, they'll pay the money for it, and then they'll probably just give you, a, I don't know, a BCBS or whatever the hell they want to give you. But to just ask for it, to ask for a thank you beer, that seems – Well, dude, it feels like it's stepping a and, little out of line. I remember when I traded my first time and I was given extra beer, I was like, wait, what is this? And they're like, thank you beers. I was like – Oh, interesting concept. I had never thought of this. So maybe this guy had just traded a few times. I don't know if this was a new person or or not. And had been, I guess, when you get what you ask for, it's never considered stiffed. But the proper etiquette is to offer a thank you beer. Sure. But to ask for it. I mean, it, maybe it, that's like schooling. I don't know. I mean, that, that, just, yeah. that's like the bellhop sitting at your at your your freaking door after they take up the luggage, and they're sitting there just rubbing your hand, their fingers together, like like dude, Rob Schneider and Home Alone too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm I'm sorry. Do you have an itch on your thumb or some shit? I mean, what what the fuck is your problem? Put your hand down. I mean, if I'm gonna give you a tip, I'm gonna give you a tip. Don't don't sit there and just blatantly ask for it, because otherwise, I'm gonna kick you the fuck out. Do you? I don't know. If you guys, tra- I mean, I know you you have. Uh, I've been traveling recently. Housekeepers are now asking for tips. Well, in have, hotels. You like in at hotels? hotels? You usually left a tip. Yeah, you oh, always yeah. leave a tip at yeah, a hotel. Always. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe. Yeah. 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 If if you're there for more than like a one night stand or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm on I'm <laughs> on the <laughs> If you do a one night stand, you probably should tip. <laughs> Freud was right. Yeah. yeah. Especially um, if she has to clean up off the ceiling. Well, so and did you did you tip the ho- did you tell tip the the housekeepers at uh Yeah, I left a fiver in the room. I had I've never thought considered. Oh yeah. The yeah. only time I, I've ever considered doing that it was when I was an absolute drunken fool when I would go to Canada when I was like nineteen, and I would just leave all my Straight. Canadian money there because I couldn't bring it across the border because <laughs> I didn't know how to trade back Canadian dollars for America. Well, that, that leaving the empties there for recycling. All these yeah. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. Here, here, here you go. Here you go. So <laughs> I always bucks. I'll usually like um, whenever I'm on a trip or something like that I'll usually try to like keep all my change and like put all my change and depending on what it is I'll be like all right you know if it's at least not you know a five or a ten or I'll uh you know leave, leave cash but usually I'll just throw my change I, into a glass and if I I'm there for no three idea. four days yes. wow. really wow maybe I'm just an awful human being I guess what up Mr but, pink but I thought Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah. well I similar concept I it, they don't make less than minimum wage. They don't. They're not, they're not dependent on tips. So I just I never thought to. But okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not for, you know not fifteen percent of your stay, but you know. Yeah, for sure. Right. Sure. No. Yeah. No, you're 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 tipping because it's such a very dirty job. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and you know it's like just imagine the people before or after you. Put it and... this way: it's it's insurance. If these people are well taken care of, they actually change the you know the the the, the sheets and stuff, and you don't have to worry about taking a black light to them to figure out whether or not you've got to <laughs> not sleep. I think it was Ocean's Thirteen with the yeah the dude. And I was just thinking Ocean's Thirteen. Not seen that one. Five diamonds. We got enough for one more. Uh, all right, all right, real quick. Um, obviously, one of the guests that we had uh, back on episode ninety-four, Robert Allen from the Detroit Free Press, Free Press uh, published an article today about pumpkin beers. As we know, we how we love pumpkin beers. Uh, but it was kind of funny because this article was like had thirteen pumpkin beers and I actually didn't hate all of them. Uh, <laughs> so, so you went in there, with an open mind, right? So, so there were a few that that he that. Well, he basically he had thirteen. Uh, his top three basically uh, from three to one: Screaming Pumpkin by Griffin Claw, yeah. uh, Cold Press Coffee Pumpkin by Southern Tier, which I was looking for a single for at Holiday, didn't have it, uh, and La Parcella from Jolly from Pumpkin. Jolly Pumpkin. Which, uh, yeah, that that was basically his number one. Yeah. Uh, other ones that he had on here: Wilhelm Scream. Uh, oh, jaw, jaw Jacker, Imperial Pumpkin Ale from Weyerbacher, Bourbon Imperial Screaming Pumpkin, Hooligan Hoppy Pumpkin Ale, Pumpkin, Unicorn Killer, Ichabod Ale, Sam Adams Fat Jack Double Pumpkin, and the worst one being Pumpkin Wheat by Shock Top. Um, so, of course, <laughs> I know we definitely don't like, we don't gravitate toward the style, but if there was one pumpkin beer you wanted to recommend if somebody asked and you can't say none 
That's a good thing Dan is Well, I mean, here. the thing is, Kunin's All Hallows Ale is not even out yet because they use real pumpkins in theirs. And so that's one that usually is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, definitely uh, one of the one that I like. And actually, somebody had mentioned the Schlafly one, which we don't even get here, but that was a good one. It's an eight percenter, but uh, I would. If you're uh, gonna drink something crappy, you might as well drink something with more. I know alcohol. my fiance has been on this. At the Atomic Pumpkin from New Belgium. It's a uh, pumpkin and jalapeno. Um, but what I would do if I were faced with a pumpkin beer choice is cut my tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Shit. That's that's that's. Well, just drink Brutal. Percella because it really has no pumpkin character. Yeah, that, that was what I would take then. Yeah. Ten anything? <laughs> uh, just... Probably like pumpkin or... Uh, oh, God. Uh, rumpkin. Yeah. Rumpkin. From uh, Avery. Rumpkin? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that one... That, that one's... one don't drive after, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, damn right. No, you're, uh, you're done. I, I would have to go with the Screaming Pumpkin. He, he's, he hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. with, with yeah. the list. Screaming Pumpkin. Even the, even the bourbon barrel. Yeah. Uh, the Bourbon Imperial. That's the, and, and that's the thing, because uh, Pumpkin, Pumpkin, they even have, and he didn't have it on the list, but uh, there is a rum barrel aged Pumpkin, which I, I saw it in the store today. I thought about trying it, but uh, I was. I've heard busy the people getting... liking that, but I, I just, I, you know, I used to like Pumpkin, and now it's just so over the top. You know, the, the vanilla in the, is just cloying, and I mean, it just, I can't drink it anymore. <laughs> Uh, you know, and and actually is a teaser because I joked with Travis of um, and of uh, Old Nation about uh, doing a New England style pumpkin ale. Oh my god! <laughs> oh and, and, man! And, and, we talk about that too. That weeks is ago. the which, jump the shark. Which which which, which <laughs> I thought was I had sort of posted that on Travis's Facebook page just to sort of. <laughs> We'll just tease just them put a little orange bit. dye and dark orange dye and go <laughs> and, 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 and and so I ended up mixing um, a. Uh, uh, just pretty much your standard uh, M23, whatever, M23, 43? and uh, and pumpkin, and it was awful. And then I did also with Dirty Dank Juice because I teased Josh from, you know, th those guys on sides too. So. Flash Gordon over there? Yes. <laughs> uh, so, hey, I just want – I'm going to – I'm gonna leave us with a teaser for segment three. Uh, can you put that camera on Nick for a second? Can on you really Nick for a second? Yeah. All right, hold on. Uh, hold on why when God's sexy name would you, you want to do that? Why? As you know, there's like this huge delay. You just tell me. Are, are, we're we're good. It's you and Nick. I want you to look at the bottom of my Facebook Messenger and see the name on there. Why is she messaging <laughs> you? We'll find out in segment uh -oh. three. Oh, you motherfucker! Oh, oh, oh. Not again. <laughs> We will be right back with the Better <laughs> on Draft podcast. Yeah. And we are back live, episode 102. Our guest from Little Guy Brewing is still in studio, opening it up hopefully next year, January, over in Waterford, Michigan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hopefully. Yes. This is so me is, is, your, is, your, is your gaming area, is that going to be outside or inside? It'll be inside. We will we'll have a patio area too, but it'll be um, you know, pretty much you know, a... a it's not going to be closed off per se, but it'll have a wall to keep from things flowing, flying around and stuff. Will there be jarts? <laughs> no, but not a bad idea. There will be darts, but yeah. Bocce ball? No, no. bocce ball. That, you know, I think that would be, I think bocce ball around drunks is probably not a good idea. Mm. Oh, nonsense. Uh, I was going to say, there is, there's a... Well, there's a place up in uh, Lake Orion area. Yeah. Well, you got Lake uh, Orion area, yeah. which is like the huge bocce ball thing. Lots of the bocce with, yeah. The, with yeah. Yeah, with the rubber Italian food. Wait a minute. How about with all the, the space? rubber Italian food? With all the space? Feather bowling. Feather bowling. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Get the dirt and all that stuff. But, yeah, no, well, that that maybe in the expansion area, we'll see. You know. Let's just get it open first with the beer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, as We're always, with uh, segment three, we have five questions with Matt Bush. Da 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 da. Nope. Nope. He has bit that five buck chip. Still no mosaic. <laughs> he spent right. that five bucks on gas. Well, gas, yeah. grass, or ass. No one runs for free. Ooh. Ooh. So, uh, Old ass back. Was it October? Do you follow the rules of the road? <laughs> Good thing we got that on camera. That Harry Bush <laughs> on. All right. So, last October, I, uh, uh, in lieu of, or right around this time, actually, I believe, Rob was getting married. So I texted his wonderful fiance and I asked for a couple of factoids about Rob, I about did. his 
his K-pop fan uh, fandom and all the other embarrassing things. Son of a bitch. That's, they kill you. Uh, <laughs> there are no baby metal questions in here. Don't worry about it. Actually, for me, that's J-pop. Get it right. And no Amobis either, but uh. we, were, we, were, we were close. Um, so, real quick, we always start with geography. So, uh, as is well documented, Nick did a, a long tour of breweries along the West Coast. Yes. So <laughs> of Michigan, <laughs> yeah. So of Michigan, the, the Lake Michigan coast. So the Lake Michigan, there you go. Third coast. Here is yes. no. Uh, actually, okay, sure. Yeah. So <laughs> Nick Brewer, Nick's favorite brewery was A Grand Armory, B New Holland, C Brewery de Mackinac, or D Sheboygan Brewing Company. You mean beer de Mac de Mac works? Beer, yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. yeah, I just write brewery because <laughs> my, my autocorrect doesn't understand French. <laughs> well, if it was a year ago, they weren't even open yet. So It was uh, this summer, okay. early this summer. Yeah, it was, they, it, was it, was the fir- it was the first week of May. Yes. So beer de Mac, New Holland, Grand Armory, and what was the fourth one? Sheboygan. 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 Well, I hope to God it wasn't Sheboygan. I would my, say my Sheboygan is Their blood orange is delicious. That's, uh, that's why I or, say. Or uh, the Grand Armory. Uh, Grand Armory makes some good beers. Grand Armory was Beer de Mac does too, but. Um, I'm going to go with Grand Armory. Rob? I am going to go with New Holland. Beer to Mac. All right, so... What'd she say? I was told it was Grand Armory. It was Grand Armory. Was yeah. it the roast marshmallow beer? It was. Yeah. All right, yeah. so... Oh, that's New, right. I will say this, though. One of the things during that entire trip that we did hit up it was all the little small plates of every single, you know, the ones that had food at least. Um, uh, Storm Cloud over yeah. in Frankfurt. Did you yeah. get some popcorn? No, we got some popcorn, but we got their tots. Legit. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. And then uh, if they had hummus at the mm. brewery, we had to have hummus. Well, shout I, out. Hummus, shout hummus out to, at a brewery? Yeah. Oh, God. Now hummus you, makes me sleep, though. Oh, man. Now you make me no, go New Holland there. had, dude, New Holland, Right Brain. We didn't go to Right Brain on the trip. Right Brain's got some good Right hummus. Brain's got some really good hummus. Especially if you get, like, the, uh, the Traverse City chips with the tortilla chips. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. Nice. Question two. This is my. This is easily my favorite question oh, no. of the yeah. night. Oh, How man. tall is Nick? No. <laughs> oh. I would expect that from Matt Bush, but not from you. Well, you're not tall. Anymore, so. Well, I actually, <laughs> I kind of snuck that one into this question, anyways. <laughs> tool. All right. So, uh, apparently, Halloween is one of Nick's favorite holidays, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which. Yes. Which of the following five costumes has Nick not worn for Halloween oh, of no. late? Oh, oh man, no. I know all these. So, <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> <that's> not, <laughs> number one, Quail Man. Number two, Wicket. Number three, Han Solo. Number four, Marty Skrull. Number five, Stimpy. Martin what? Squirrel, you mean? Or Squirrel? Oh, squirrel. God, not that fucking dude from Pharma, bro. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just... Uh, Marty uh, Squirrel. Okay. Marty Squirrel. Sorry. It's all right. I'm, so I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go with Marty Squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Martin Squirrel. Marty, Marty Squirrel. Marty Squirrel. Marty Squirrel. Marty Squirrel. Oh, I thought you were saying you were correcting him by saying it no, was Pharma, bro. No, it's not Pharma, bro. <laughs> which of, the, which of these question, five right costumes there. has Nick not worn? Was he not Quail Man? Was he not Wicket? Was he not Han Solo? Was he not Marty Skrull? Or was he not Stimpy? Or was he actually? The answer is mo- more than one of these things. There's more than one that he. Yeah, has he was been? actually two and a half of these things. <laughs> two and a half. Of so them. I know so the answer. So I'll, I'll let you guys go. Oh my god! I mean, uh, for some, I'm, for some, I'm just gonna go with my gut. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Stimpy. Okay, I'm, so I'm going to say Han Solo just for the hell of it because it's almost too obvious. But because okay. I mean, he would definitely be too short to be a stormtrooper. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, come on! Oh man! Yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> so <laughs> this answer, th- this answer is going to force a question. So um, no, two years ago, I guess Nick was both Quail Man and Han, Han Solo, Solo. Yep, at the same time. Yes. Okay. And this year, apparently, he plans to be uh, Marty Skrull. Yes. Now, he's a wrestler. Yes. How do you plan on dressing as a wrestler? Just wearing... So, so Marty Skrull has an umbrella with, you know, it's a black umbrella with Bullet Club on it, for those of you that follow wrestling. I don't. Uh, he has the plague... You see the plague... I have no idea what okay. it is. I just saw a wrestler in black trunks. All right, so... 
And he's hairless, which yeah. it was my part of my next yeah, question. No. We're going to have to figure out the logistics of that one. Um, well, it's easy, a top, laser. Top hat, sunglasses. He has the plague doctor mask. Like if you go, The look, long nose. Yeah, yep, he has that. Uh, black trench coat uh, with a bullet club so umbrella. So you're, you're, you're going in the intro... Intro outfit, not the black. The trunk. intro okay. outfit, yeah. I, I was I was I afraid pro- of anybody who was going to go to Halloween I party probably, with you walking out black wrestler. I would, well, it'll be at it'll be at Yomacon, which is not necessarily during Halloween weekend this year. When but is that? It is the first weekend of November. Okay. I will be here for the show, obviously, and then I'll be going back to my hotel room at the Renson. Hey. hey. <laughs> and I will be probably be getting drunk. All right. So the answer to this, um, Stimpy. <clears throat> well, yes. Nick was not Stimpy, which I thought would be a great costume. Why would it be a good costume? You and T- Tara could be Ren and Stimpy. I, I didn't Gosh. see. I just didn't see that as a good costume. That Nick is also exactly while wanted. while daily wearing the Wicket costume. He has never been Wicket. Wow, because I mean that kind of goes a little <laughs> outside. I'm surprised of... she didn't mention Mario. Oh, she did, but I I didn't f- okay. fit that in. Okay. Um, but I because she did. She that was my Ewok joke. Did you did you yeah, catch I that? Did. Okay, we got it. So you guys have a delicious beer in front of you. Now I want to know how does this beer fit in with me? This doesn't. Okay, thank God. <laughs> what is that? Smell? I really want. <laughs> oh God, dude! What the hell? Very tropical Are, fruit. Is it? Is Rob's nose gonna bleed? My hope is yes. Mm. It's fucking four loco. I mean, it is just some straight booty, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what this is. <laughs> God, <laughs> tasting notes from the brewer. When you put, when you smell this, what do you smell? What do you taste when you <laughs> when it hits your tongue? I can't drink it. I can't. <laughs> What's so funny is, is that you can you can see it all <laughs> on oh, camera oh, too. God, I gotta switch to the Twitch oh. feed now so I can see myself cringe. I'm, I'm not sure if the nausea is because I was laughing so much or it was because it was the beer. Todd, so what do you think wait, about... Wait, wait, quote-unquote <laughs> beer. What do you think about the beverage in your cup? Uh, it's uh, very, it's sweet, very <laughs> tropical, over-the-top tropical fruity, <laughs> under-attenuated, um, alcoholic. Um, <laughs> it's alcoholic, all right. Yeah. It's a one-sipper p- drain pour, that's what it is. Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that would you uh, ba- college students will use with their dates. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Rob's going back for sip number two. I haven't got <laughs> sip number one. Oh, then how are you? You got it. You got to drink it. You got to uh, put it in your mouth. Is it? Well, it's not. It's a fruit punch steel reserve. <laughs> <laughs> that, that totally is. I'm going with Todd on this one. Well, we have two questions. Oh. So hold on. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, here's here. I, the, here. What the fuck? <laughs> is, it, is it better or worse than Four Local Gold? I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I, I got nothing for this. It's, I mean, is this the shit they used to put, they put in Duracells? <laughs> <laughs> Are we drinking alkaline yeah. acid? Right. Wait, wait, that's not an acid. It keeps shit. going and going and going. Yeah. I mean, Nick, have another sip. No. Come on. No. Why not? not? No. Oh, come on. At least I'm going yeah, for another yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, say, get out the this, this, shit. this is, some this of is the, so uh, what the fuck that you have to do. Oh, like yeah, you're right, because I got to see your reaction up close and personal. Some shorts to meter, you know, half and half with that would cut it a little bit, give it a little more tartness and... Uh, not, wouldn't be so sweet. So we're, we're going to ask two questions as a collective, and then we get to we get to guess. So uh, all right, Ken so, thinks he, so he's going to lead us. I, 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 I think I have it, but I, I obviously I'm, I'm thinking it's a different one. So I'm going to I'm going to attempt. <coughs> so is this a so we we may have like a, a clarification in regards to the question, which is fine. Okay, but is this a flavored? Beverage in regards F&B. to the line of Steel Reserve X, Molson X, Bud Light X. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, flavored malt beverage. Four loco yeah. X. Well, not not necessarily FMB because I'm I'm trying to get it down to at least because we know it's some type of FMB. Yeah. But the thing is, is that is it a flake? There's Steel Reserve, but then there's Steel Reserve Fruit Punch. There's Budweiser, yeah. but then there's Budweiser Hurricane. So are you asking me if it's a, deline- a, der- a derivative of a different brand? Yeah. So like, it because there's Budweiser. Uh, put it Bud this way, Light. most likely anyone's not going to put this out. Right. Oh, this is my 
Oh, we've got, we, we've got a flagship, and right. this is a... a Ford's a Ford, but there's a so, there's, so, there's there's an expedition. So, at, so at, ask this again. So, does it is it a version of a known beer, a la? I go yes. I would go yes on that. So there is a standard drink there, and then there, this is a derivative of that drink. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. Yes, that is a great way to clarify that question. Okay, so obviously it's not Steel Reserve, but it's it's something. It's well, a f- the Steel Reserve flavored ones do not taste like yeah. Steel Reserve. Correct, but that that gets us into instead of like the the FMB, like the Four Loco FMB, it gets us into at least the the category of your your Budweiser, your Steel yeah. Reserve, your whatever other flavors there may be. I mean, like, Steel Reserve does come in packages, so just so you know. I, I don't I, expect I, you to hold your hand out and carry it around. Dude. See, my my first flavor, I thought it was twisted tea. No, I don't think it's a tea. But mm. I don't think. No, it's I'm, it's it's probably some sort of you know tropical fruit sort of. That's why I was thinking either fruit punch or like pineapple. Yeah. Rob, how you how you hanging out over there? This shit's making my stomach hurt. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Are you gonna have a boom boom early tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> pain boom boom. <laughs> The Booty Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it may not even make it tomorrow. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I might not even, not even make any, it any, home. Any more thoughts on this delightful beverage that you have? This shit sucks. <laughs> I, think, I think if you blended it with like a sour, it, it could you could at least finish it. So, so what you where's, think? Sour? Where's Dan? Let's get some BK, uh, Bourbon County in this Shit, thing. if Dan was here, he'd be like, this is delicious. <laughs> he would. He would love this shit. <laughs> Every damn time. Ugh. So, Ken, you're the leader of the band that's made for you and me. <laughs> God, I don't know. I don't know where to go next because the answer was yes. Should I have said no? Well, I mean, if you said no, then we would at least be knowing it'd be like a Seagram's or a yeah, Cisco or yeah, Fort we'd Logan. have a little bit more because, like, we we know. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a derivative of a known brand, a very well-serving brand, I would believe. Like Mickey's flavored. Is there Mickey? Is no, there, I'm I was kidding. Say, is there I'm Mickey's kidding. I'm, I'm, I hope not. Mickey's mixed with Burnett's. <laughs> Bernickies. Bernickies. Mm. There you go. We Mick-Nett. got a drink. Mcnets. Mcnets. <laughs> oh my gosh! Do you have so you're 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 getting like tropical fruit punch type yeah. type flavoring? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I'll tell you what. You're you're right on the nose of the tropical fruit. I can't tell if that was sarcasm or not. I know. Like, and then he brought up the nose. I'm thinking like Fruit Loops right now. Spool Truth? If this, if this, this was Spool This is not Spool Truth. This is not Spool Truth. No. And much less if it was, then yeah, damn, I wish Angela was here because then she would have got it. And yeah, I'd be pretty upset because. <laughs> All right. So we got a second question. Yes, we do. I, I'm in the middle of absolutely nothing. Like, I've got no idea. Oh, you're no. so not fun. I well, you gave us shit beer again. <laughs> I told <laughs> again. You, the rules are: I go and buy a single, and you have to figure out what it is. So this has got to be. So it's got to be a single in a a well stocked like single. Oh, is, is, is that a can in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see us? Yeah, I'm, uh, this is a can for sure. So that that takes away from where I was going to attempt to deviate, which was like Mike's heart or Smirnoff. So. I really think get the bulge out of his pocket. And I'll show that online so that the viewers. No, can I've, I, I don't need any more fans. Based on the bulge, it looks like it's a uh, a sixteen ounce. <sighs> well, <laughs> he's underestimating my bulge. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, size <laughs> matters. It's, it's, it's a little chilly outside. <laughs> uh, All right, so question number two. Should I mean? Well, I mean, even though we're, we're talking about major brand, do we need to go U.S. Canada? Oh yeah, fucking Labatt. Because or, Labatt, that's right. Labatt has that damn. They they have a couple because they've got the the fruit the that the well the fruit punch one that they have. For some reason, that's the only one I could think of. I know that they have other ones, but that's the that's the first <coughs> one I could think of. I know this isn't the fruit punch because the fruit punch is a hell of a lot more in color than this is. So, all right. Question number two. Is this 
an American made flavored malt beverage. It or, is. Or what is the brewery American owned? Oh. That's yeah. that draw. That's too. There's too many lines on that. Yeah, because if you're if you're going like technicalities in regards, I mean, Paps versus is is originally this... it was an American owned brewery. Okay, well, so well, some were. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you got Molson Coors, which I believe is Canadian. You got ABI, yeah. which is Belgian. You got yep. Paps with this Russian. Russian. Yeah. So yeah, there's no there's no real it, as long as we know it's brewed in the United States. Like it's... well, I mean, I don't think any other country would accept this. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, someone does because it's sitting there on a single shelf. Can can I yeah. get a sneaky third question in? I will. I'll give you. Yeah, because you because it's are... a very specific question. Sure. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll accept if, it. C- it's it's going to. Is this a steel reserve beer? It is not. Okay. Okay. Oh well. So it's American made, not steel reserve. It comes in a can. And it's tropical. And it's tropical. <laughs> um, I mean, you got Budweiser. They got Hurricane. They got. Well, the, the thing is, it's it's gonna be like a f- like one of these Bacardi flavored beverages or something like that. That you've got the the flavored malt beverages, even though it's a division of somebody, it's gonna be like that. A, I mean, he Mai did Thai or he, something like that. Uh, he did. He did drop one of those Jamaican me crazies on us once before. Which yeah, uh, but that was in a game. You know, that uh, was in the. Uh, was it, uh, I forgot who was. I think that was Brigerman that was drinking that. Oh, he brought that in last week, but that was in the game where you brought your little Specs Howard friend in. Well, he was chugging it. All right, you ready? Yep. I'm gonna go with the guess. You guys can. Uh, I, I'm just gonna. Con- I got. I got it. I got nothing. <sighs> I, I, well, I already uh, threw out the, the Steel Reserve punch, so. Is it? If you guess it on the nose now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take away your computer privileges. I, I'm looking at a specific thing and because there's no there, – you've given us nothing. Right. Like, I gave you a, be- a great beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Based on whose reviews? Uh, it gets like a two and a half on it. Did it get you laid? Huh? Did it get you laid? Oh God no! <laughs> I would never serve this to another individual. I don't want this kind of breath coming back at me. Oh. Is this a Bud Light Raspberry? No, this is not. I was say, I was thinking Red's, Red's Wicked, Wicked mango. mango. I told you this. You had the tropical. Thing. Oh my gosh! Oh. Oh. God. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> Suck. I bet you Dan knew exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout out to Big Machine. I, don't, I can't say I've ever had that. So. Yeah, don't ever again. I would yeah. imagine too. No, that's that's yeah the, the time. And I uh, mean, it's. Ugh. I mean, now I get a little bit of the the appley, but you don't know whether that's always whether that's just exactly yeah. that's the, like everything I Did kept you finish it, Rob? Was, was apple. No, I'm I'm just saying to hell when I'm going to. Nick, here you go, Rob. Yeah, here. Bottoms oh. up. One, two, three. Woo! Oh, that was terrible. God. It's better than so, the actual apple, though. It, question oh, four. Is this the beer? Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Oh. Oh, this isn't bad at all. Question four. You never had it? You suck. I've had the apple, and it, I had almost vomited. Question four. All right, Tara Ugh. said, I'm going to put this in quotes. When his inner frat boy comes out, he reaches for this macro light lager. What does frat boy Nick Paglia... Reach for when his inner frat boy comes out. Good question. What is that? I don't Ice know. house. <laughs> <laughs> Ice house. <laughs> no, that's what he drinks when he's having wait, a bad wait, day. Wait, that's right. That's a bad uh-huh. day. Matt, show me the answer. I'm not gonna say what? What? Uh, no, I'm, all gonna, right. I'm not gonna answer. Well, that. yeah, I know you're not gonna answer. I need. We need I'm, multiple choices. I'm just choice. curious as to what she said. I'm just curious. I'm just curious if my 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 that's, girlfriend that's knows. Message. Miller High Life. What what what's her? Okay, all right. He said light lager, so. so it's oh. multiple choice, or, or we just throw oh, it out there. How, many, Miller how many macro light lagers do you know of? Do you need a multiple choice? Natural light. Okay, <laughs> Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, uh, Yingling Light. Natty I, light I'm not a stranger uh, to sarcasm. Bush Light. <laughs> Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Natural Light. Uh, this actually isn't half bad. Why are you guys bitching? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go, go with... Uh, oh. I'm gonna go with Coors Light, <laughs> Rob. I'm Mick Ultra 64. No, you gave us the three options. It's Bud Miller, Miller Coors. Miller Light then. 
The Miller answer is, is Coors Light. Coors Light. Uh. <laughs> um, I'll and, agree with that answer. Yeah. And question number five. Five dollar pitchers at JD's. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Those were the days. Question number five. I don't even know what this is, so I think that's going to... What the fuck is an Amobi? Amiibo. What amiibo. the fuck is an amiibo? All right, so the, the um, amiibos are these little coll- uh, collectible, like little character things you can get for the Nintendo Wii U. It's like a Funko Pop, but it's kind of. What the fuck is a Funko Pop? So, just, 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 just take it in. So, so there's these little collectible in. figurines that you can use in games like Smash Brothers. Um, I know Fire Emblem series has a whole. You can basically Damn. touch it to the uh, console, and they basically interact with that figurine. I don't think you were to born enhance yet when I started playing Fire Emblem. Continue. No, probably not. <laughs> was that the seventies? No, he was still playing. Uh, no, that was in the caveman era yeah, when he, he was he, making he, fire. No, Emblem. Everyone Man, knows Rob was playing Atari tennis. Twenty six hundred here. Yeah, he, was, he was making emblems with uh, fire. Of course, everyone knows Rob here, was so. playing tennis for two before. I was playing adventure on oh, Atari twenty six hundred. Yes. Pitfall? You're playing Snafu on the Intellivision. All right, so what's the question? What the fuck is an Amobi? Um, <laughs> <laughs> look it up. I'm fucking... Because, I mean, they literally... I mean, they look like... Um, Smurfs. It's a little figurine. It yeah. looks like shit I used to get out of the quarter Smurfs. vending machine at the, the local diner. <laughs> they're, they're Wait, you, would, you wouldn't go with a little stick em, like, slap thing that, no, like, actually, sticks slap, to the... No, actually, slap, I had all oh, that thing that's, like, a little gooey looking thing? Yeah, the, I, the, the, the long, yeah. the long uh, I thought you were going to say a snap bracelet for a snap. I, snap oh, I, I had two fascinations. It was the NFL collector helmets. No. I, Oh, and, I remember those. And yeah, I used to have those. Though. And the homies. Back oh, in the end of the 90s, geez. beginning of the 2000s, they had these little figurines the called homies. homies, and they were the most, looking back, the most racist <laughs> and sensitive things. They were all dressed in ghetto garb, looking like uh, plaid shirts. Not a big unbuttoned. Pogs player. No, that was I mean that was like mid nineties. Yeah. I'm talking. Yeah. Homies were like culturally insensitive <laughs> brats. Yeah, <laughs> against Mexicans, but they were the coolest <laughs> shit in the world. I thought they were su- like yeah. my mom. Would be like I, I think my mom would be like, "Hey, here's your twenty five cents. Go get your homies." <laughs> Availability nineteen ninety eight to present. <laughs> to present. If you so, find wait, me, wait, 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 present. You can still get them apparently because they nobody's ever finished spinning that twenty five cents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You could get uh, <laughs> Hollywood, cool. known for his zoot suit and 1970s disco hairstyle. I'm going to see if I have any. I, I know she's digging through my shit tonight, so I'm pretty sure I can find some homies. I'll bring them in next week. <laughs> but All right, so let's circle the show back. Let's talk about Little, Gu- Little, Guy, Little Guy Brewing, Brewing. Company. There you go. Yep. Where can we find you on your social media verse? Uh, stop man. dropping cans, Matthew. You can look for me at uh, Beer Todd. Um, is you know, it's on I, camera. I on Twitter and Facebook. I, although I'm on Facebook a lot more than I am on Twitter just because it's easier. And for the longest time, I was on Twitter, and then it just was so hard keeping up that I switched to Facebook You don't have a more. pill for that now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Well, I am 50, so, yeah, it's, it's you know, you got you to deal with what you got to deal with. But, uh, yeah, and, and so, so, yeah, so – just at Beer Todd or Todd Parker. Um, Little Guy Brewing Company has a Facebook page. I have the URL for the website. I just haven't really done anything yet with it because... LittleGuyBrewing.com? Yeah. Keep talking. Keep yeah. talking. Sorry. And so, you know, you do have some different things. Um, and I even have Little Guy Brewing Co. Uh, at Little Black Guy Brewing Co. On, on Twitter also, although I'm not really using posting much of that right at the moment yet. But it's it's it's... Just trying to get things out there. Twi- Facebook is right now the best way for me. Um, a lot of people will go with that. Um, you know, I'm I've got an Instagram feed for myself. I don't post that much to it yet, but I, you know, here and there we'll post things, stuff too. But um, so, what what are you planning when you get out of the gate? What's going to be? What do you think is going to be the flagship? You said the honey Kolsch is is what you're kind of going to well, leave honey, with. No, honey Kolsch will be a good one to have. I don't think it's going to be the biggest seller um, right now. Because the IPA marketplace is so full, I don't know whether it's going to take over. But I think the, the, the Belgian Pale is going to be distinct enough and have a sort of a unique flavor and will fit a niche that's not really being taken up very much yet. Um, and so I think that will do pretty well. Does the Belgian Pale have a comparable in the marketplace today? Uh, Your Belgian I mean, Pale is going to be like X-Beer? 
Well, I mean, that, that's the thing is you, you would say you look at things like Deconic and stuff or some of the classic ones. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and like Hublon uh, from actually from a uh, 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 new uh, or from uh, Omegong um, has a sort of Hublon, you know, not the Schuf's Hublon, which is a different beer. But you, you, you've got uh, just a Belgian pale, but this will have some of the, like I was saying, some violet and and lavender in it, which will give it an interesting sort of uh, flowery character that that will add a neat little distinct flavor to it. Um, and and you look in other states, you're start, starting to see more Belgian pales coming around. Um, it's it's a good style of beer. Um, it's kind of like a mini saison for some people. Um, you know, it's an easy drinker. It's a good session. Sort of something that's not going to fill you up that you can have a few in a, a session. It's not going to, you know, because the blue moons seem to and and shock tops seem to have taken over that sort of role right now for that wit beer. Um, although I'll still do my summer zest, which I think will do well too. But it's just a matter of trying to fit into that marketplace that sort of Belgian-y flavor, but yet not you know crazy um, because you know that's the thing is. People want something a little different. They're going to want, you know, some distinct, but they're going to want something that's a standard too. So, so where are we going to find you? Where are you physically going to be located? We are right over there um, in Waterford off the 59 on Highland Road. Um, some of you might have known the Kmart that was there that's just now got closed about three months ago or so um, in one of their recent closings. So right over there by Cass Lake and, uh, and Highland Road or 59. It's so about um, about a mile and a half up from Telegraph. Um, west, Telegraph. Yes, or actually, hold on. yes, west of Telegraph. So uh, because it sort of bends around, sure, you know, it, it gets a little weird there. Um, but yeah, and and so you know, for those people who drive from Oakland County or Oakland, Central Oakland down out to the suburbs. You know, at the end of the day, drive through there, it backs up in that area, too. So, so stop and have a beer. Stop and have a beer. And you said 50% off for all of the Better on Draft customers, right? <laughs> Something like that. For the first six months? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So. so that's going to do it for us here at the Better on Draft. Todd from Just Little kidding. Guy, yep. thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Go Thanks check them out. Me, guys. Don't forget to check out our sponsors. We've got North Center Brewing in Northville, Michigan. Zatuna Liquor in Rochester Hills and Brown Iron Brew House over in Washington Township. Don't forget, we're also doing a fan duel week four. Check it out on Better on Draft's Facebook page, as well as a $2,000 scholarship over at Schoolcraft College. We, uh, we appreciate you all joining us, and no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's Better on Draft. Better on draft. Have a good night.